Hey guys, this is Tom Box, and I think a lot of you guys are playing Brandon Chimera incorrectly. You guys are playing it wrong or just not the most optimal because you did not include this card, Master Tao. This card is insane for the Brandon Chimera line because it offers you so much. A lot of people have misconceptions about this card, but we're going to go over this in the lines that we can make with this card. There's four different lines, four different plays I'm going to showcase to you guys that help me secure the top eight in the OTS Store Championship. I had the choice between playing Rescue Witch, which I'm way more comfortable with, and then I decided to try Master Tao and you know what, now that I got some level of result with it, I can give you guys my finding and some of the things I would change along the line. So, you know, we're going to start with a deck profile, deck list, but then I think most of it you want to focus on is on the combo and the explanation there. And hopefully it will open your eyes on, you know, different things you can do with Branded Chimera. And it's not as linear as you guys might think. So starting off, I just want to go through this quickly because I want to show you what I did. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, my journey to top eight in the OTS Store Championship was the biggest struggle I've ever played in. And uh, yeah, I ended up getting uh, hit in the top eight and then I died uh, in the top eight round, which is a little unfortunate because like I bricked seven games and it's like not like the deck's fault. I guess it kind of is the deck's fault, but like it's not the deck's fault. But here's the details of the deck list. Uh, three Mirror Sword Knight, three Kotal, two Fallen Albaz, and then two Big Wing Burfament, Master Tower the Chanter. This whole video is all about Master Tower the Chanter. This card won me so many games I think if you're not playing, you're crazy. And I'm going to read that card in a second. One Alu Bird because I play the branded opening. The end of Anubis, I drew you way too many times. It also backfired on me once or twice because my opponent went to dark and summoned it back on their side of the field. It was, I don't know if I want to main deck this anymore. Uh, there's also a Triple Gazelle. This is my favorite opening card now. It's I like to open this card more than Mirror Sword Knight, and I'll show you guys in the updated combo, which is a little bit safer against Ash and ends on a way bigger plus. Um, and then there's Triple Ash, two Veilers, and that's it for the monster count. For the spell count, Triple Chimera Fusion. I wish I saw this more often. I saw this quite often, uh, mainly because it's opened with Alibur and I normal summoned it, and it was just not very good. You do not want to open Alibur at all. You want to brand it opening the card, so I might up this count. I might even start considering putting in the um, Fright for a package, so I can use Edgium Chain to get me Polly, because I think I don't need to play a 40 card deck. This is 41. I don't think I need to play 40 card because there's so many hand traps right now. I think I need three engines to go with it so that even if they hit me with an Imperm and an Ash, I still get to play. And I think to do that, you need to push this deck above 40 so that um, you can get that level of consistency. Super Poly, I opened this far too many times, but it's always been like, you know, put an Illusion Monster or put like a Gazelle instead of Super Poly. And that's kind of how I play most of my games. I've won four die rolls and I bricked on all four of the opening. That's how bad it was when it comes to my hand. It was like hands of two cross out, a Veiler, an Ash, and uh, there can be only one. That's like an opening hand for me. And then that happens so often. Sometimes it's Fallen of Albaz with a Super Poly, and then that's it. <laughs> you just gotta run with it. It happens so often to the point where the judge was like, dude, your hands were atrocious. I don't know how you actually managed to pull that off. In other words, even if you brick sometimes, you can still play out of it. Uh, in terms of everything else, triple super poly, two triple attack, never saw this card, never saw this card. Whenever I saw this card, it was in multiples of twos and threes and no starter to go with it, really sucked. Almost got to the point where I wanted to side the card out. And then there's triple imperm and TC boo. I do play a second copy in the side. I'm not gonna show you guys the side. It's like, it's not really worth your time. Um, and then for the extra deck, Mirror Jade, Albion, Rimbrum, and Lubellion. These are the main four for the branded package. Two Guardian Chimera, two uh, Chimera the Phantom King, King of Phantom Beast. I don't think you need two of these. Honestly, okay, I only summoned out this card once the entire tournament. That's right. In fact, the monster that I summoned most often was Burfomet. This, this card basically led to all my game wins. I'm gonna show you guys uh, the four different things I did uh, in terms of combo-wise that you should do with Master Tau. MVP of the deck was Master Tau by far. Uh, and then there was Garura, Chimera, the Illusion Beast, and then there's the Magnum, Mud Dragon, Predator Plant, and Draco Quest. And I would probably cut uh, one of the Chimeras just so that I can play Guilty Gear Free. Okay, so I want to preface this with a lot of these combo lines, they are going to revolve around Master Tau. And I think if you're not playing this, you're missing out on the ability to diversify your lines. And if you're going to be playing Branded Chimera at a competitive level, you can't play the linear, oh, go Mirror Sword Knight and, you know, hope, hope for the best. Why is Master Tau so important? First of all, I think let's get rid of some of the misconception of this card. 
this card only locks you out of the graveyard for illusion monster your extra deck and your main deck they can still summon out alternative types away from illusion and you only really summon out during your opponent's turn the alternative monsters thanks to the chimera monsters all right and therefore this card is equivalent to say a preventer in rescue ace because as long as you can put this into the graveyard fallen of albas super poly put it into the graveyard boom instantly you get yourself another free monster that said let's take a look at the first combo line here first combo line we're looking at gazelle and mirror sword knight which one do you start with you know you guys can take a pick you know most of you guys are gonna choose like oh let's go with mirror sword knight mirror sword knight into birth from it birth from it will give you two cards that is i think the weaker line especially if you open with gazelle because if you get Ash on this one, you lose the body. And if you actually paired yourself with a Chimera Fusion, if you go into Gazelle and they Ash it, you punish them by playing Chimera Fusion and you just go all the way and they rip a card out of their hand and build a full hand regardless. That's why this play is better. And if you already have the Crossout Designator, I think it doesn't really matter here. And in this particular case, if you do get hit by Gazelle and you don't have it and you have to sit on Gazelle, at least you have a Mirror Sword Knight to follow up the next turn. That's why I think Gazelle is a better opening play. Now, let's take a look at how this one will play out. So if we were not to go with the Mirror Sword Knight, we're going to try to get as much as possible. We're going to get both the Gazelle and Birth from the Summit. So we're going to summon out Gazelle, through its effect, get the Chimera Fusion. And then we're going to activate the Chimera Fusion and we're going to fuse together the Mirror Sword Knight and the Gazelle. And that's going to summon out the Birth from it first. Chain Link 1 is going to be Birthmet, Chain Link 2 is going to be Gazelle. Gazelle will add uh, to our hand a Kotal, and then the Birthmet is going to put the Master Tau into the graveyard. This is going to start a new chain with Master Tau effect that's going to summon out the Mirror Sword Knight for you. That's great. And you didn't activate this yet, so that means you can still also get Birthmet. Now first, let's activate our Chimera Fusion and we can chain the Mirror Sword Knight. So Mirror Sword Knight is going to summon out the Birthmet. And then we're going to get the Chimera Fusion back into our hand. Burfamit just got summoned, and therefore we get to add the Chimera Fusion and a Gazelle into our hand as well. So from the two card that we started with, we now have this much to work with. I think this play is a probably a better line to go down rather than just going into Mirror Sword Knight and hope for the best. You know, you get what I'm saying? Because in this line, you can still do the same thing and rip your opponent's hand apart. And uh, you actually get to keep an additional Chimera Fusion. Which means, uh, if you want to extend into Birthmet previously, then you would have to lose the Chimera Fusion. And you would have to, like, hard open one. But now you get basically get to play three on one turn. So you can activate this. Personally, one of my lines I like to do is I like to take the Gazelle and the Birthmet here. Yes, I'm not reviving an additional card. It's great to get an additional card revived because it's it's more or less free. But I like to summon this way into the Chimera King of Phantom Beasts because in this case, Chain Link 1 will just activate this. There's nothing else to actually activate here. I want to maintain a dark on the field because having a dark on the field to me is just a lot safer overall. Uh, it gives me more options in my extra deck where I can go into Draco's Tapelli for a negation in case I want to you know, focus in that direction. It, to me, it's just a little bit more option. Uh, don't forget to activate your Kotal. Kotal to add, in this case, I would probably add the Mirror Sword Knight, leaving myself some space to add a Gazelle later on. Uh, but typically, you do want to hold a beast in your hand uh, for the most part. But in this case, now you can set this. You do get so much free advantage here. They're still ripping one. You have your graveyard fully set up. You have a Master Tile ready to go in case your Birth Moment gets to revive a card. And you get to, you know, line up your timing a little bit better. But that's the opening play. Uh, but if you were to choose to fuse away the Birth Moment instead, or the uh, non-fusion Birth Moment, uh, what would happen is that you would have this on the field, this will hit the grave, and then you get your Mirror Sword Knight back, and this is your end board instead. Both end boards are very, very similar, it's just that you get to do more stuff during your opponent's turn. Okay, so combo number two here is going to be the one card OTK. It's just one Kotal, and you'll get there. So many games, when it got to a simplified game state, uh, it's just a matter of top decking, and top decking Kotal made me feel super happy. You activate Kotal, you get yourself the Mirror Sword Knight, and sometimes you don't even need the Kotal because the graveyard's already loaded. Uh, then you normal summon out the Mirror Sword Knight, you activate it, and you summon out Burfo this time. Yeah, this is like, oh, this is the original line all over again. Burfo effect, get uh, the Chimera Fusion and the Gazelle. Activate the Chimera Fusion, fusing the Gazelle and the Burfamit together. Summoning out, not the Chimera, and summoning out Burfamit. The reason why a lot of my games were so short is because I didn't even need to rip their hand. I just 
just, so, just game them. What do, you, what do you want from me? And so we're activating chain link one, chain link two, chain link three, and we're tossing into the graveyard our master Tau. Look at that. And then we get to add to our hand. I'm probably just gonna go for a Kotal. And then Burf from it will summon back our Mirror Sword Knight. Now, new chain, Master Tau effect, summon back another Kotal because that's another illusion monster. And here we are. Activate Chimera Fusion, add it back to our hand, and activate the Chimera Fusion, fusing for four monsters. And that gives us Chimera the Illusion Beast. Yeah, that's right. And this can swing four times. So the first swing, if you even if you can't, you know, defeat it. It will negate and zero out, unless it's a Chaos Angel. Okay, don't do it to a Chaos Angel. Uh, but if you can push through now, uh, now that they're zeroed out, you have three swings giving you 9,300 damage, and that's why a lot of my games ended so short because one copy of Kotal just cleaned house. Okay, so on occasion, you're going to be given lines that give you both your Branded Fusion and your Kotal. And you want to maximize on it, and you don't want to just end on a board where you have just an additional monster. You know, that's cool. You know, it's good. It's a disruption. But if you want to maximize your follow-up, this is what I did. And I actually took, I think, three games just from this particular play. So if you go for the Branded Fusion line, you have to Branded Fusion. Some people will negate it, some people won't, but we're dumping into the grave at the Gazelle and the Albaz, okay? And we're going to expect maybe we're going to get hit by an Ash, especially when we get to the point of um, Mirror Sword Knight, all right? So we summon out Rimbrum, all right? Let's get him out. Activate the effect of Gazelle. Gazelle here, because you have Kotal, you can add Master Tau. Master Tau is the best follow-up, and I can show you guys why. You can activate the Kotal now. Most people won't negate Kotal because they wait for the Mirror Sword Knight. And that way, they really clear things off. Because if they try to negate Kotal and you do have a Mirror Sword Knight follow-up, it's just really bad Yu-Gi-Oh for them. And so, at this point, you can just attempt to normal summon out the Mirror Sword Knight. Attempt the effect. Assume we get Ash here. This is you know a pretty painful point. And let's just hope that we have like something to set. Maybe a mirror, like a super poly or something along those lines. Something to clear our own monster, okay? And so we pass turn. Our opponent tries to build a board. They can't really just go in blind here. You have a lot of disruption in the graveyard, and you have to know how to play with your graveyard in this particular case. If they go into extra deck monster, of course, you can negate and bounce it. Uh, but in the case where, okay, Rimbrum, say you have to super poly it off, clear off some of your opponent's monster, they clear your monster, and you get to the point where you have a Rimbrum in your graveyard. This graveyard line is so strong that you more or less just have a lot of plays against your opponent. And here's how it goes. If they put out any monster that relates to the extra deck, uh, then you can go activate Rimbrum, summon back the Albaz, so you banish the Rimbrum. Summon the Albaz onto the field. Using Albaz's effective fuse, we're going to pay Master Tau for cost. And... Okay, well, say that we did successfully fuse. We fuse now into our Mirror Jade. Look at the follow-ups here, guys. This is really important. Mirror Jade, and now we have Master Tau Effect. Master Tau Effect, we now summon back the Mirror Sword Knight. Activate the Mirror Sword Knight. And now they better have some level of disruption, right? Because now we get into Burfament. Burfament is going to give us the Chimera Fusion plus a Gazelle into our hand. And not only that, we can activate the Mirror Jade. Banish one of their monsters and we get to put an albion into the graveyard wow so uh during the end phase now the albion is going to provide you with another branded fusion this provides you with a full follow-up right away as well as board clearing process and that's because you set up the graveyard with a branded fusion and you loaded your hand with a master tau and this is through getting hit by an ash on the on the mirror sword knight and that's like one of the ways that you can fall up and really hurt your opponent and and most people are going to die from this because you have the brand of fusion to do another follow-up and you have chimera fusion so there's a lot and don't forget when you go into branded fusion and you summon into lubellion you don't have to just summon into the branded line you have the chimera monsters also as an option which a lot of people seem to have forgotten that that is also something you can do with Branded Chimera. Okay, this next particular play is just showcasing how Gazelle can beat the, uh, I guess, the Hot Red Dragon Calamity play from Centurion. Now, this is a simplified game state. You should throw everything in your ability to stop anything that would lead to a Baron coming out. So, say I do only finish off with two cards, and these are only two cards. They still get to a, a Legacia. There's two, two back row. Okay, 
So normal summon out gazelle. They're going to try to chain their stuff, but you're going to be chain like one gazelle, chain like two primera, chain like three Chudea, something along those lines. All right. So I get to add the Chimera Fusion into my hand with the Cold One hand. You do need one Illusion Monster in your hand. I don't think it really matters which one it is. Now, in this case, these two now summon out Primera. So they have triggers, so they get to go first on this. They're going to go on the Field Spell, Stand Up, and the Primera, Chain Link 2. And then Chain Link 3, we're going to use Chimera Fusion. All right, follow me here. This is very important. We're going to fuse together the Kotal and the Gazelle summoning out into Burfamit. Okay, and so they are going to add a card and they're going to perform a synchro summon using the Trudea and the uh, other monster, the Primera, and that's going to summon out the Crimson Dragon. Now, note we have triggers now, so we get to go chain link one, Burfma chain link two on the Gazelle. Gazelle's going to add the Master Tau into our hand, and our opponent will probably not trigger the Crimson Dragon here. Because it's really bad to trigger the Crimson Dragon. And uh, let me just load my card. The Mirror Sword Knight. Because if they were to chain link 3 onto this particular play. They would not get the effect of the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend uh, Calamity. Because that's chain link 3. That is a when trigger. And it can miss timing. So it has to wait. But by the time it's done waiting. You have a Mirror Sword Knight dropped into the grave. Thanks to Burfamit. Because this was chain link 1. And then the chain link 2 added this. Okay, well, we can actually set up a bait play for the opponent. I guess this, I don't really show, want to show you guys this part because I'd rather have people fall for it. But if you watch this part, congratulations, you're not going to fall for it anymore. So we're going to activate Chimera Fusion to add it back to our hand. And then we're going to create an opportunity for our opponent to activate the Crimson Dragon. So we're going to activate the Chimera Fusion right now. And we're going to fuse together the Master Tau and the Burfamit. Opponent likely won't do anything because they just lose their effect uh, if they do. Uh, so we're gonna fuse these two together and we're gonna go into magnum reliever so we have one monster from our hand and then we have one monster on the field okay now that this hits the grave it looks like it's a safe opportunity your opponent likely will um not really do very much right now because if they try to attempt to go to hot red it's not good at this moment so you can go into master tau effect that's going to be the trigger that's going to summon back the mirror sword knight now this is an open game state more or less and so your opponent now has the opportunity to activate the crimson dragon but being turn player prio you can activate the mirror sword knight first uh, if you want to but you can also bait your opponent into letting them activate it and if they do activate it, then you can chain magnum reliever banishing the chimera fusion popping the uh the legacia and therefore on resolution this just goes back to the extra deck and you have an open board to play with that's how you can bait it out and then you can activate the mirror sword knight mirror sword knight summons out birth from it birth from it never got summoned this turn so activate the effect get the chimera fusion get the gazelle activate the chimera fusion and you can go as far as to take these two and start doing a little bit of hand ripping against your opponent into the king of phantom beasts and you can even activate this effect if you really need to, but if, if they didn't do anything. But for the most part, once the Chimera Fusion hits the graveyard, you can activate the effect of Magnum the Reliever. Put this to the bottom of the deck and draw a card as well, so you can use it as a way of getting follow-up. And that's how you can kind of break some of these boards. That's all I got for this video. Hopefully I inspired some of you guys to see a hey, branded camera is actually not that bad. There's many different things that you can still try out with the deck. I wish I could fit like Nightmare Magician in here. That's one thing that I do regret. But one thing I do recommend is if you're going to go into the build, try out a line that has or a build that has uh, maybe a 45 to 50 cards. It's such a hand trap heavy format that I wish I had tried, say, the uh, Edge in package with the Fright Fur. Uh, patchwork that's one line i wish i tried a little bit more of i think we could also increase the branded opening i did not like opening aluber so i might try to cut that and maybe swap that for the Horus package Horus package is really good it naturally has a beast in there which would be dua mutef dua mutef is also water which also makes the super poly even better there's a lot of things to explore there so definitely don't miss out on it there's also the runic package you can try because slip near is also a beast I think there's just many, many opportunities to kind of make the deck better. Uh, and if you want to hand rip your opponent and just have like, you know, layered interaction, then you can try the runic line as well. That's all I got for this video. Hopefully, you know, you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, hit that thumbs up. Hit subscribe to get the notification bell. Check out msdmerch.com. And I'll see you guys all in the next.